okay hello everyone in a new video in this one we are going to solve an exercise related to mechanics and the chapters of mechanical actions and equilibrium of a body this exercise was a previous one and the breve exams in 2018 first session exercise number one the title of this exercise is equilibrium of a solid a spring r of stiffness k is equal to 20 newtons per meter then here we have the stiffness of the spring which is given by k which is equal to 20 newtons per meter is attached to a fixed support. A solid S of mass M is suspended to the free end of the spring. Document 1. Then they mention document 1. Now we can use it. This is the spring R and this is the solid S. Now S is at equilibrium under the action of two forces. Its weight W of magnitude W and the tension T vector of the spring of magnitude T is equal to 1.5 newtons. So they already mentioned that the solid S is being subjected to two forces. It's weight W, which acts on the solid S at the center of gravity G, vertically downward. And along the spring, we have the tension T, which is directed along the string upward. We have that the magnitude of the tension T is given by 1.5 newtons. So here notice that they gave me the stiffness and they give me the tension T so we can directly calculate the elongation of the spring using Hooke's law. Now they are telling me to take a G is equal to 10 newtons per, kilo, per kilogram in which a G represents the gravitational field strength or the gravitational acceleration. Here they are telling me that the following statements are force, rewrite them correctly. So all of these four statements are false we need to rewrite them correctly for sure with, just, with the justification. Then number one, they are telling me that the elongation of the spring at equilibrium is given by x is equal to 6 centimeters. So the first thing is we need to identify the wrong part of the statement. So for sure that this elongation is wrong. Then how, how, do, how one can calculate the elongation? So here we have the stiffness k of the spring and the tension t along the string. Or along the spring. Then using Hooke's law, we can determine the value of the elongation. Then let's say apply Hooke's law. Hooke's law is given by that the tension which is denoted by T is equal to the stiffness of the spring which is K and the elongation. Here the elongation is given by X. Knowing that we are interested in determining the value of X. Constructing the triangle of this formula here because we have multiplied and t will be at the top, k and x are at the bottom, we are interested in calculating the value of x which is given by t divided by k. Now the value of t is given by 1.5 and the value of k is given by 20. Then plugging this on the calculator it will give me 0 0.075 since both t and k are in the SI so the value of x will be in the SI which is meters. But notice that here the answer is given by centimeters. In order to calculate this value and the given value, we need to convert x to centimeters. Knowing that from meters to centimeters, we multiply by 100. Then 0 0.075 multiplied by 100. This will give me 7.5 centimeters. Then the elongation x is given by 7.5 centimeters. So always in physics, whenever we need to compare two numbers or two quantities, they must have the same unit. So now because the elongation is given by 7.5 centimeters and the answer is given by 6 centimeters, so for this reason the statement is false and the correct statement will be given, for, will be given by the elongation of the spring at equilibrium is x is equal to 7.5 centimeters so here they give a half of the mark for this calculation and ha half of the mark for rewriting the statement correctly so here rewriting the statement the statement correctly is important now in number two they are telling me that w is a contact force and t is force acting from a distance which is wrong because no we know that the weight w is acting from a distance or action from a distance
whereas the tension T, because we know that the only three forces that act at a distance are given by the weight W, the electric force and the magnetic force, and all other forces are classified as contact forces, in particular the tension T. Then the correct statement will be given by W is acting from a distance and T is a contact force. Now, in number three, they are telling me since S is at equilibrium, then the relation between W and T is W vector is equal to T vector. Now, the wrong part in this statement is, the con is probably the condition of equilibrium. So, let's determine the condition of equilibrium. How do you apply the condition of equi equilibrium? We always start by writing at equilibrium. And how do we apply this condition? Always on the left, we will write the sum of different forces acting on the solid S. And this, in this case, they are given by the weight W plus the tension T. And on the other side of this equation, we will write the zero and we don't forget the vector, the zero vector corresponding for the equilibrium condition. Now, moving T to the right hand side, then W will be given by W is equal to minus T vector. Now, the first equation tells us that both forces W and T act on the solid S in order for it to be at equilibrium corresponding for the zero vector, whereas the second equation tells us that both W and T have the same line of action, opposite direction, and same magnitude. Now, compar comparing this equation with the given one, we notice that here there is, a, there is a minus sign which is missing, okay? Then now we can rewrite statement number three correctly and it's given by since S. So this minus sign here is very important because it tells us that both W and T have opposite direction whereas the equal tells us that both have the same line of action and same magnitude. Since S is at equilibrium, then the relation, which is the vector relation, between W and T is that W vector is equal to minus T vector. And now finally in part four, the mass of S is M is equal to two kilograms. So the wrong part of the statement is given by the mass. So in order to rewrite it correctly, we need to determine the value of the mass. Knowing that in part three, we already, we have determined the correct condition, uh, the correct form of the condition of equilibrium, which is given by the W vector is equal to minus T vector. Now, because we know that the magnitude, the, we know the magnitude of the tension T is given by 1.5 Newton, then we can deduce from this equation, the magnitude of the weight vector W, then let's say in magnitude, We have that the weight is equal to the tension, but we know that the tension T is given by 1.5 newtons, then W is given by 1.5 newtons. So now we know the value of the magnitude of the weight W vector, which is W is equal to 1.5 newtons, and we already know the value of G is given by 10 newtons per kilogram. Then we can determine the value of the mass from the following relation that W is equal to mass times gravity. Now constructing the triangle of this formula, W will be at the top here because we have multiply and mg at the bottom. We are interested in calculating the value of M. So putting our hand over M, it will be given by W divided by G. The value of W, which is equal to the tension, which is equal to 1.5, dividing by G, which is equal to 10. Now plugging this fraction on the calculator, it will give me uh, 0 0.15. Since everything in the SI, so the value of M will be in the SI, which is kilograms. Then the mass is given by 0 0.15 kilograms.
Then in this case, the correct statement will be given by the mass of S is M is equal to 1.5 kilograms. And by this, we have finished solving this exercise. Hope it was beneficial for you guys out there watching it and see you soon in another one.